Welcome back to part two of my top ten RPG special. We will go down the list from five to one. Remember, I can only name one game from each franchise to just make the top ten that more specific. Here is a quick look at ten through six from part one, which was Tales of Vesperia, Fantasy Star 3, Generations of Doom, Skies of Arcadia, Final Fantasy 2, and Grandia. Please look at the bottom of my info page if you want to look at part one. Lunar, the Silver Star Story, comes in at number five and was developed by Game Arts and released by Working Designs in 1993. My first real game I bought for the Sega CD. I finally could enjoy CD music throughout the game. Although the game didn't push the envelope on any genre, the story was everything. I never quite experienced a love story within an RPG so strong, with the exception of Final Fantasy X, that drew me in so much. I actually cared whether or not the main characters remained together or separated in tragedy. This was the start of characters becoming more with the advancement of new technology, with real conversations, and more. Wait, Guardian, is that you? I haven't seen you since we lost Dime. Yes, dear Quark. And if not for you, he would still be alive. A part of me died that black day. But now, dear friend, things are changing again. I'll soon rule the world. But first, you have to die! Gallion! What are you doing? No! <laughs> Lost Odyssey comes in at number four that was developed by X-Square employees at Miss Walker and released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2008 for the Xbox 360. This game revolves around immortals who wander the land trying to find meaning as they work together to reveal that they are part of something much bigger. Using a turn-based system, they did add quick time events to battles that loosened up the usual grind, but the visuals and story still hold up and puts many RPGs to shame. The lore and fantasy behind the game screams Final Fantasy with a 70 plus hour quest that always keeps you busy with great pacing and wonderful characters that are so deep having you keep coming back. Mass Effect Andromeda comes in at number 3 as my Mass Effect pick from Bioware and released by Electronic Arts in 2017 for the Xbox One X. I know what everyone is thinking and yes, this game was rushed and needed major patches to get it right. I'm talking about the finished version all patched up. The game remains the best shooter in the series and I thoroughly enjoyed the quest from beginning to end. Those who never gave it a chance is like being a fanboy of Sony, Nintendo, Sega, or Microsoft who don't play games on other consoles. Don't deny yourself of a great experience just because of whatever reason. Be a gaming fan and enjoy them all is what I say now as an adult. The game has a great story 
action, visuals, and character development, and many choices that will really affect the end game. A must try, especially at its low, low price, a 60 plus hour adventure to enjoy and explore an experience I will relish having again and again. Yes. In this case, painfully. But I'm content to let him bear that burden. Whatever gives me Meridian, I will transcend what you pretend to be. You're out of time. I've matched you every step. You failed, Archon. You're the pretender. You learn by accident. I am the genetic inheritor of a thousand species. No more mercy. Kill them all. Jade Empire Scream sequel or remake as my number two RPG developed by Bioware and released on the original Xbox in 2005 by Microsoft Game Studios. Hot after releasing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Bioware comes in with a knockout punch to the guts with Jade Empire. Using hand-to-hand -hand martial arts and magic as your offense, you will bring balance or destruction to the world. Jade Empire is probably one game besides Mass Effect where I replay the game multiple times, exploring and questioning every different option, conclusion, and decision I ever made throughout the game. Fantastic story with excellent characters that keep you motivated the entire quest and more. Only about 20-25 hours, but this game pushes the genre to new heights in RPGs where one decision can shake the world. There's no end to them, just like my wife's pocket. Uh, keep your head down, bum man. I'm killing things here. You'll heal us if we don't get out of here soon. Look there, that's our only chance. Also coming from Bioware, my number one RPG is Dragon Age Inquisition. Released in 2014, this singular game was the apology and much more for Dragon Age 2. Using the Frostbite system, the visuals are excellent with fully fledged out conversations with just about every person really fleshes out the lore and believability of the game. The choice of turn base or action gives the players ultimate control on what you want and to take advantage of it. I chose a more action approach and I'm still amazed how addicting this game can be. Spending well over 100 plus hours with DLC, this one game is the ultimate investment in RPGs. I can only hope to enjoy a game like this, as massive as it is, with great storytelling, writing, to character development, also reaching back to the very first Dragon Age that I can hopefully follow suit in Dragon Age 4. The way RPGs keep reinventing themselves, I truly can't wait to see what comes next. That's it for part 2 on this special episode on my top 10 RPGs of all time. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg, take us out of here. I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die!
Yeah.